Would you turn to First Peter chapter five? You know, I think one of the questions sometimes that we hear that come into our spirit is, are you ready? Are you ready? Sometimes we ask ourselves, am I ready? Am I ready? Sometimes we don't even realize the arena of what we're asking or that question is coming. I can tell you that when the Holy Spirit asks you, are you ready? It's a matter of self-examination. When he asks you, are you ready? In other words, there's something he's getting ready to do. But it's not about whether you're able to do it or not. It's about whether you're willing to cooperate. Because so many times we try to rely on our own abilities and talents and even our own knowledge to accomplish things that God asks us to do. He's trying to get us to a place where Truly, it is no longer we that live, it he that lives in every area of our life. In 1 Peter chapter 5, in verse 1, let's read it together. It says, the elders who are among you, I exhort, I, I who am a fellow elder and witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory of that will be revealed. So he is expressing something that the sufferings of Christ will allow you to partake of the glory. Without sufferings, there is no glory. You and I are always being tra trained in everything that we do. You won't learn anything unless you experience something. Just like in school, you can go to college and you can get all of these degrees and never put them to work. Nothing happens until you begin to experience things. Until you're trained that what you've learned in the class, you're able to apply in life circumstances and situations. So he expressed something that he not only witnessed the sufferings of Christ, of course, but he experienced the sufferings of Christ so that he could partake of the glory of God. He's, verse 2, shepherd the flock of God which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but willingly, not for dishonest gain, but eagerly, nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. I want you to grab hold of something because God has a purpose for everyone in the function of, of being a leader in some position in some place. But first we must learn to follow before we can lead. Amen. Amen. Verse 5. Likewise, you, you younger people submit your what? Yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting all, all, I said all, your care upon him for he cares for you. It says, resist the enemy, resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. In other words, everyone will go through the same or similar training. But may... But may the God of all grace, who called us to eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered or experienced a while, he will perfect, he will establish, he will strengthen, and then he will settle you so you can no longer be moved. To him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So he's asking us in the process of training that we're to submit to overseers with a humble, open mind and open heart. In other words, an open spirit. Be willing to receive. Knowing God is with you. And everything will work to the good. And it will fall in order. Everything falls in order 
by cooperation with the Holy Spirit. It will fall in order with blessings of his promises. Now, there's something important. He says, if you are found in me. Does everybody get it? If you are what? You are found in me. Wow. You know, it says, be sober, be vision, because your adversary, the devil, does what? He's what? Because he what? He's seeking whom he may, be, he may devour, right? He's looking for someone he can attack, he can devour. So let me ask you this. If you're found in the Lord by the enemy, can he get to you? No. No. So there's a place where we want to be constantly found in him and not out of him. See, in him means you're with him. In him is with him. Not in him is without him. In him you are strong. In fact, the enemy fears you. But without him, we are weak in the spirit. Is everybody okay? Hmm. Resist him steadfast. Why? Because he's looking for someone he can devour. This is not a one-time event. This is constant. He's looking for every open door to access me or you. Does everybody get it? Okay. Now, when the enemy attacks, one of the things he uses is fear. He uses lust. He uses oppression. He uses offense. Again, if you are found in Christ, if you are found in him, you will always have victory. You will always have victory. You will, without him, you will have torment. Does everybody understand this? So there are many who have torment because they're really not in him. The enemy has sucked them out of him. In other words, that person now is relying on their own strength and abilities and not Christ. We are to lean on him on a constant arena. Always, always. That's why we've talked about always keeping the Lord before us in everything that we do. In Isaiah 59. To be found in him is victory. Not to be found in him is torment. Isaiah 59. I'm sorry? Isaiah 59. Glory. Is everybody there? How many of y'all want to be in torment? Well, I didn't think so. You'd have to be an idiot if you want to be in torment. You know, remember the old saying, misery loves company, right? <laughs> it means it's a miserable spirit, a tormenting spirit that somebody's accompanying. And you don't want to be that. We want peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. In verse 19, 59, 19, And it says, so, sh so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes in like a what? A flood. The spirit of the Lord will lift up a what? Standard against him. The redeemer will come to Zion and those who turn from transgression in Jacob, says the Lord. As for me, says the Lord, this is my covenant with them. My spirit who is upon you, and my words which I have put in your mouth shall not depart from your mouth, nor from the mouth of your descendants, nor from the mouth of your, your descendants. Descendants, says the Lord, from this time and for what? Forevermore. In other words, the Spirit of the Lord will rise up against your attackers with words of battle, words of promise, 
and words of authority, three things that will always occur when the enemy comes, if you are found in the Lord. The Holy Spirit will cause a quickening to you, and you will rise up with what? Words of what? Battle. You won't be a wimp. You'll battle. Words of battle, words of promises, which is covenant. And words of authority. Has everybody got that? What three things will the, will the Holy Spirit arise and quicken you to when the enemy comes against you if you're found in the Lord? Words of what? Battle. Battle promises, and authority if you're found in him. If you're not in him, you will look for another way out. This is where people become runners because they're looking for something to fulfill. In John chapter 6, An authority if you're found in him. Will those give you victory? Amen. Yes. John 6. And verse 55. John 6, 55. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. We've heard this before. Let's start at 54. Jesus said, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood is eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Again, we know that the flesh is associated with the promises, his words. You know, it's pretty amazing when you really begin to think about it. Jesus brought words of war. <laughs> they were warring words. Amen? Amen. And of course, drinking of his blood represents drinking of the Spirit. In verse 55, For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood does what? Abides. In other words, you are found in him then. And I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. That's the word of God. So again, he, he expresses the eating of his word, drinking of his spirit. You will be found in him. This is eternal food, not spiritual food. Has everybody got it? This is eternal food. There's a lot of spiritual food out there, but some of it's junk food. That's what New Age is about. There's all these foolish religions. What do they do? They open, a war, open doors to the spiritual realm. But they bring people into bondage, not freedom. And it brings deception. Brings division. So people open themselves up to the spirit realm. Not even realizing that by the words they're speaking and the things that they're agreeing is opening them up. But God Almighty, the eternal one, the true loving Father, brought me a new eternity. Eternal words. Eternal. In other words, allowing me and you to stay connected to the eternal realm where you and I came from from the beginning. Oh, hallelujah. They, they, are, they are words, of course, of battle, aren't they? Promises and authority. Abide in him. Okay, so you and I consist, consistently eat eternal food, not spiritual food or flesh food. But... Life food. Always to abide in the life giver and be found in him. Always abiding in the life giver and be found in him. And I hear people get angry at the devil and they call him all kinds of names. It don't bother him. In fact, it doesn't even move him away. He loves it because he's tormenting you. He's getting fed by every angry word you say to the devil. Unless you're speaking war words. 
Oh, glory. Battle words. John 15. Remember, one of the things is, that's why you sow your way out of everything by speaking battle words. Amen? You sow your way out by speaking battle words, by speaking covenant words, which is promises, and words of authority. No matter what circumstance you're in, it doesn't matter. I don't care if you made a mistake and you got yourself into something you shouldn't have. You can still sow your way out. Every time. That doesn't mean we look to go make mistakes and test God to see if I can sow my way out. But you can sow your way out of everything. John 15 and verse 5. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I am the what? Vine. Vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me, that means be found in him. And I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do what? Nothing. Nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me and my what? Words. What kind of words are they? Battle words. If they abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it will be what? It'll be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit so you will be known as a disciple of mine. You'll be known as an extension of me. Words of battle, promises, and authority. Philippians 3. You know, um, Usually the first words that come out of your mouth are soulish. <laughs> you know, something, uh, most of the time it's, oh, snap before I attack. <laughs> it's better than what I used to say, praise God. <laughs> Although some people are still saying those things, but it just repent and then attack. Amen. <laughs> Especially when you drop that hammer on your foot or whatever it is. Oh, snap. Then attack. Let's speak it. But what things were gained to me, these I have count lost for what? For Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as what? Rubbish. Rubbish. See, people are still trying to rescue the things they've lost. Forget it. That I may what? That I may what? Gain Christ. Gain Christ. The only reason why they're trying to rescue the things that have been lost is because they're still living in the soulish realm and not in the spirit. Other than that, you would say, forget it. See it. See you later. Good vibe. If God wants me to have it, it will come before me. Other than that, forget it. And when it does come before me, I'll have the discernment to determine. Hello. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ. Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ, gain the anointing, be found in him. And be found what? In him, oh snap, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may what? Know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I've already attained it all or am already perfected, but I do something. I press on. I don't look back. I press on that I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of what? Laid hold of me. Counting all things lost for Christ to be found in him. It is, there is a secret place of Jesus. There is a secret place of Jesus for you and I. 
the Christ, his death, sufferings, and resurrection, the power of Christ, to know these things. Remember, you cannot partake of the glory unless you partake of suffering. John 12. Jesus is going to show up unexpectedly. You will not know when he's going to come. We, have, we kind of got an idea, but we're not going to know the day or hour. Amen? Amen? He's going to show up, and those who are in him will go. Those who are not in him will not go. Whether they call themselves believers or not, you better be found in him. Oh, glory. John chapter 12 and verse 23, please. Let's speak it, please. But Jesus answered him, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls in the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it what? If it does what? Die. Man, that word, D-I-E. That's a powerful word, man. <laughs> if it dies, it produces what? Much grain. He who loves his life, now he's explaining what he's talking about. He says, he who loves his life will what? Lose it. And he who hates his life in this, lo in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my father will what? My father will what? Honor. If a grain dies, it produces much grain, doesn't it? You must hate your life according to the worldly approval. Those are sufferings, aren't they? This is the sufferings. You and I suffer in the constant arena of being disconnected from worldly ways, from worldly associations, and worldly desires and fame. It's a constant. Constantly keeping yourself disconnected so you can connect, stay connected. Go to Galatians 2. Galatians 2, verse 17. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you can go to Eternal Library and learn how to get set free. Let's speak it together. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. If Christ therefore a minister of sin, certainly not. For if I build again those things which I have what? Destroyed. Destroyed. Is that according to your past? Yes. I make myself a what? Transgressor. See, so many individuals are still sucked up in the soulish arena. When God has cut them free from certain things and they start to go back and build on because they want it restored according to their will and their way and not God's. And it's called a transgression. You know, people don't get it. God separates us from associations that are associated with the world. You know, so many times people think that they can change someone. You and I can't change nobody. Only he can. My wife tried to change me. We ended up getting divorced. <laughs> Only to my visitation from the Lord or he changed me, we got remarried. You can, I cannot change nobody. We can give them the truth. You know, you heard the saying, you can bring the horse to the whatever, the water and they can drink, you know. You can give them a meal to someone, but they have to choose to eat. It's called participation or cooperation. It's called sowing. And without cooperation, there is no freedom. Amen? Oh, glory. So we don't want to build on those things that God has set us free from. We'd have to be plumb stupid. And that means that per when you start doing that, you're not in him no more. You're in you. All right, let's go a little further. Verse 19. For I, through the law, died to the law that I might live to what? To God. I have been what? Crucified with Christ. 
It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, which is his plan, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. Wow. Building on sinful, worldly ways again makes you and I transgressors. It removes us from abiding or being found in him. One of the things that we got to do is maintain your denial of self. Amen? <laughs> it's, it's a death process. There's that area where he says, I've been crucified with Christ. You must look at yourself as being, that old man is crucified with Christ if you let him. So we want to constantly stay away. We should be looking at the old man and the ways of the world being nailed to the cross just like Jesus did. Amen? Stepping into the grace of the plan of Christ and be found in him at all times. All times. This is where we do a constant self-examination. Am I in the Lord? Am I truly in him? Christ, you know, so many people are, first of all, looking, am I doing God's will? Don't worry about God's will, because if you're not in him, you're not doing God's will. First get in him. Then his will will unfold. And most of the time, you don't even have to figure it out. It comes automatic. Oh, hallelujah. First Peter 4. Found in him. Everyone say, I'm going to be found in him. Glory. In verse 1, we'll start there. This is a powerful chapter. We're going to sow this. So we're going to speak it together, okay? 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 1. Let's speak it. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh... Arm yourselves also with the same mind. So if you're armed with the same mind, are you armed with the same words? Yeah. For he who has suffered in the flesh of the natural realm has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of God. Again, can you perform the will of God if you're not in him? No, you can't. So people are crying out, oh, Lord, let your will be done. He said, get in me. My will can't be done if you're not in me. That's what Jesus fought for constantly. Verse 3. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. In regard to these things, they think it's strange now that you don't run with them in the same flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you. So in other words, the people you used to associate with when you say, I'm done. I'm done. Why? I got a reality of life, death, hell, and heaven. I ain't doing this no more. I'm not living that life no more. I am done. Amen? And that's when you repent, the blood is activated, you're a virgin. I didn't say you'd feel like one. Or even you think like one. But it will come as you continue to use warring words. War, words of promise and words of authority. Things begin to change. Why? You're going to sow your way out of the matrix where you're no longer bound in the maze of the matrix, but you're dancing on it. Glory. Glory. So they're going to think you're strange. They're going to speak evil of you. What are going to try and do? Sway you back. Even your own parents who are unsaved or say they're saved. Your closest friends. Your employers. They'll try to draw you back. Even your children. Gosh, Dad, I miss when we used to party. Not anymore. It's over with. I'm going on the life of eternity and you have a choice to make. Amen. Oh, yes. Is everybody okay? Praise God. Let's go a little further. <clears throat> In verse 5, and what does it say? They will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the, and the dead. 
For this reason the gospel is preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. See, God looks at individuals dead or life, life or death. Those that are not in him are dead. Those that are in him are alive. Somebody get it? So, but he is the resurrection power. He wants to raise people from the dead to bring them to life. You and I were zombies out there in the world. But now we're alive in Christ, no longer dead to Christ. Verse 7. But the end of all things is what? At hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, minister to one another as a good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability with God supplies, not man, that in all things God may be what? Glorified, glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and dominion forever and ever. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the what? Fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. Welcome it. You may not like it, but use it for training. You won't learn unless you experience. You know, we can learn from other people's experiences. But those experiences, God prepares you so you don't fall into it. Unfortunately, somebody was, you know, we fall into it anyway sometimes. Because we just didn't get it. Verse 13. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you for the spirit of glory and God rests upon you. On their part, he's blaspheming. On your part, he's glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or thief or an evildoer or as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. For the time has come for judgment to begin in the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now, if the righteous are scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him and doing good as to a faithful creator. So you and I are always seeking another level of death. Oh, we're seeking a what? Another level of death. God is always trying to bring me and you to another level of denying ourselves, another level of removing. Why? Because he's trying to remove all the worldly desires. All the wills that are false wills, false faith, false expectations, all of these things so we are completely found in him. Because when you're completely found in him, there's peace, joy, and righteousness, but there's trust, rest, and wait every time. You don't move without him because if you move without him, you move out of him. Amen? Well, I think I'll, well, I just think, well, you better know that you're told and not think. Always seeking another level of death to the flesh and soul. Are you ready? Grab hold of this, catch it until soulish activities are submitted to the Spirit. Amen? That, in other words, soulish activities that are to the flesh are no longer activated. But they are submitted to the Spirit. I'm going to say this again. Until so, so that the soul, until soulish, uh, soulish activities that are to the flesh are no longer activated, but are submitted to the Spirit. When this begins to happen, this is something powerful. When this begins to happen, are you ready? They become sensors of instruments. They become sensors of instruments in relationship to eternal common sense. 
Eternal common sense. These are sensors of instrument. When now your soulish activities are no longer activated of the flesh, the soulish activities are now activated in the spirit, they become sensors of instruments that become eternal common sense. Why? Because it's eternity, eternal sense, common sense all the time. And what does this do? It allows us, me and you, to see through and to hear through. And it aids in decision making. It aids in decision making. Do I need to say this again in some arena? Always seeking another level of death to the flesh and soul until soulish activities that are, to the, that are to the flesh are no longer activated but are submitted to the spirit as sensors of instruments in relationship to eternal common sense. This is allowing you and I to see through and hear through. It is an aid and decisions to be made. 1 Corinthians 13. Oh, yes. I don't know about you, but I'm enjoying this this morning. <laughs> Somebody's going, it's killing me. <laughs> Praise God. It's a good day to die. We're just another level. Every level of death, amen, allows you to kick another devil. God ain't going to allow devils to get to you unless they're, you know, until you can smack them. That's what he did with Joel, didn't he? He set Joel up, right? Didn't the devil attack Joel? I mean, Joel was the greatest example. Job. So everybody got it? Job. That was a job section. It's the employment arena of the Bible. But anyways, Job was a powerful example. And the only weapons Job knew, because he doesn't have what we have now, was the blood and the sacrifice of animals. That was his covering. So when Satan came to the Lord, of course, the Lord set Satan up. Amen? What did he say? To, the Lord says the same. Hey, have you considered my servant Job? Job probably went, no! What are you crazy? What's going on? You're going to set me up? Yes, because he's an upright man and shunned evil. And he protected his children and his family and his households and all his possessions by sacrificial blood sacrifices every day to the Lord. So the first thing that Satan did was removed all of his livestock so Job could no longer protect himself. But he never cursed God, even when his wife said, why don't you just curse God and die? He said, no way. I came into this world with nothing. I'm going to leave with nothing. And whatever God wants to do with me, so be it. That's why he was the wealthiest man in the world. <laughs> and then what happened afterwards, God doubled it everything. He restored multiples. Oh, glory. Where did I say to go? 1 Corinthians 13, okay. Verse 11, let's speak it. When I was a what? A child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a, a man or woman of God, I put away what? Childish things, that means soulish things. The word child here is associated with soulish. I put away soulish things that were attained to the flesh. For now we see in the mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall... No, just as I am known. And now abide in faith, hope, love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. Childish things are soulish attachments to carnal behavior. No longer, look at, we, we got to stop acting like human beings. And we need to start acting like eternal beings. Amen? Amen? <laughs> According to the character of Christ, 
Well, and this can only be accomplished by being found in him. Faith is from the spirit. Hope is from the soul. And love is eternal. Mm. First Peter chapter 1. Soulish attachments. You can have a soulish attachment, attachment by going through Burger King. You can get it your way. Amen? <laughs> Some people want that with everything. I want it my way. God says, no, it's my way or it's the highway. <laughs> it's 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. Let's sing it or speak it. Are you ready? Blessed. Everyone say Blessed. Be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away, reserved where? In heaven for you, who we are kept by the power of God through faith for the salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, Though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various training. That the genuineness of your faith, checking your soul to see if it's been converted. Amen? Because now you're supposed to be living out of the spirit, not out of the soul. The genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to the praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Whom having you not seen, you love. Though now you do not see him, yet believing you what? You rejoice with joy inexpressibly and full of glory. Receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Of this salvation, the prophets have inquired and searched carefully who prophesied of the grace that would come to you. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. Remember, sufferings, glory, then comes glory. Suffering, then comes glory. Suffering, then comes glory. Glory is also associated with promises of favor. Verse 12. To them it was revealed, not to themselves, but to us. They were ministering to things which now have been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Things which our angels desire to look into. Therefore, gird up the what? The loins of your mind or your thoughts, which is in your soul. Be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ as obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former loss as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all of your conduct because it is written, be holy for I am holy. And if you call on the Father who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear, reverence, honor, and respect, knowing that you are not redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold from your aimless conduct received by traditions of your fathers or men, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in these last times for you, who through him believe in God who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and your hope are where? In him. Amen? In him. Glory. Again, the level of death is your level of cooperation. Your level of death is associated with your level of cooperation. It will position you to serving. Now listen, there's something very important in this. Because God is always trying to get us in a place and position us to where we begin to sever childish roots. Has everybody got it? He wants to get us in a place where we're severing childish roots instead of plucking fruits. Amen. Too many people are plucking fruits and not severing roots. That means they're only taking off the surface. He wants to get us to that place where you and I are positioned. Where we're severing childish roots instead of plucking fruits. 
and he experienced resurrection power and covenant blessings <laughs> so that your spirit and soul are found in him. Psalm 91. And then we have one more scripture. Is everybody there? Yeah. Found in him. <clears throat> in verse 9, Psalm 91, verse 9. Let's speak it because what you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you become. No speaky, no eating. It's like no worky, no eating, right? Remember, we're eating light as we speak it. And as you're speaking it, these are words of war, promises and authority. They're battle words. Verse 9, because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, Hallelujah. No evil shall what? Befall you. That's if you're in him, right? Nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Nor shall he shall give his angels charge over you and keep you in all of your ways. In their hands they'll bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You shall what? Trample foot if you're in him. Because you have set your love upon him, therefore he's going to deliver you. Hallelujah. I will set him. He says that he'll set you on high because you know his name. You will call. He said, you'll call upon me and I'm going to answer you. He said, I'll be with you in times of trouble. I'll deliver you and I'll honor you. And when, with long life, I'll satisfy you and I'll show you my salvation if you're found in me. Simple. Close it. First John chapter 5. First John chapter 5. Found in him. First John chapter 5. Did everybody hear me? All but one. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's a good day to die. <laughs> Next level for another devil. <laughs> Praise God. Is everybody there? Verse 18. Let's speak it, please. We know that whoever is born of God does not what? Sin. He doesn't, let, doesn't live a life of sin. But he who has been born of God keeps himself. How are you going to keep yourself? In him. Absolutely. And the wicked one does not touch him. Praise God. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. The whole world. And we know that the Son of God has come and given us a what? Understanding. That we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true. And his Son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. That will draw you out. So we really don't have any excuses, do we? Just stay in him. Know that all the circumstances you're going through is to bring another level of death. Your level of death depends on your level of cooperation. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We ask that you apply the blood of Jesus upon this seed. We put it under the blood so that the enemy doesn't steal this vital information that you've given us today. We welcome the next level that you have for us, and we ask that you'll, through your spirit, quicken us and strengthen us so that we may cooperate with the next level of death and the next level of cooperation 
so that our words will become words of battle, of promises, and authority, and that we may be found in you at all times. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.